Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Every acquire in the territory down on our backs. Son of a bitch! Watch your mouth. Call me a son of a bitch again, you're dead. You hear me? Welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, disc number 22 in the Italian collection by 88 Films. So yeah, we're going to get into this one. This one, um, first time watch for me. Uh, I wasn't quite ready for this, if I'm honest, and we're going to get into why. Um, so the blurb on the 88 Films page says, uh, when their plane crashes in the dense Amazon jungle, anthropologist and all-round ladies' man Kevin Hall, played by Michael Sopke, I think that's how you pronounce him, who we've all seen before in Blast Fighter, is left to protect a bevy of model bombshells who are along for the ride, including the gorgeous Eva, played by Suzanne Carvalho from Women in Fury, and on their journey back to civilization, they battle the harsh elements of the Amazon, and cra clash with terrifying jungle creatures, not to mention a run-in with local slave traders. They eventually find themselves deep in cannibal territory and fighting to save their skins. Formerly known as Cannibal Holocaust 2 during the VHS era, M M Michele Massimo Tarantini's rip-roaring riot of Italian exploitation finally arrives in pristine HD and is ripe for rediscovery via the blistering new transfer to the flesh-hungry fiends at 88 Films. Now, in terms of special features on this one, we have a restoration 2K from the original camera negative. I will say that the restoration is actually pretty crisp. Quite like this one quite a bit. Uh, some of the 88 Films ones have been not of the almost the most impeccable 
quality, but this one looks nice and fresh, so I, I really enjoyed that. It's got the kind of standard English version with LPCM mono audio at 88 minutes. Um, the Italian version, which seems to be cut by a minute, with LPCM mono audio and newly translated subtitles at 87 minutes. It has a really good documentary, actually, called Location, Location, Cannibalization, uh, featuring Dr. Calum Waddle on can cannibalizing cultures. So, Calum Waddle, we've mentioned him a few times in here. I don't know what his relationship directly is with 88 Films. I know that he's heavily involved with acquisitions, um, and that's, that's kind of maybe where he's... I, I was going to say that's where his speciality lies. I don't know if that is the case. All I know is he does quite a lot of stuff for them in the background, and um, I would dare say is gearing them up for movies like this because he's you know he seems to be a bit of an expert when it comes to the Italian cannibal subgenre and certainly in this one he is he's doing his job here with this um, this kind of twenty minute documentary of how he, he came across movies like this and how just in general directors have for all intents and purposes had a tendency to pass things off. Uh, as almost kind of a degree of cultural appropriation in the way that cultures are passed off in cinema when it's a lot of smoke and mirrors compared to who they're actually portrayed and where the movies are actually shot um, so it's, it's well worth your time checking out um, looking forward to seeing more of him I know he's done quite a lot of the he did a lot of the documentary stuff, 48 films, and before that, quite a lot of stuff for Arrow. Uh, so yeah, it was really, really good though. Out with that, deleted scenes and trailers, which, to be honest with you, at this stage, it just seems to be par for the course when it comes to 88 films. First they giveth with the, 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 you know, the actual transfer itself, but they taketh away when it comes to special features. They're not always packed with the same degree. I will say though that you can currently pick this one up from anywhere between $7.99 and $9.99 so the lack of special features doesn't necessarily break the bank um, if what you're looking forward to is checking out a really good cut of the film which is what we've done here. So um, yeah where to begin with this movie so I'll, I'll kind of go into a bit more detail with the, the plot then I'm just talking about stuff that just made me laugh and how tonally all over the place this movie is. So it really is, a professor shows up um, on site in Brazil, they're getting ready to go into the Amazon, he shows up with his daughter in tow, um, the hotel itself seems to be a front for some serious cockfighting as well, which is kind of weird, uh, and, uh, and while they're there, uh, Kevin Hall, played by this Michael Sokwe, uh, he shows up and he wants to kind of tag along with them because they're going to a place called Dinosaur Valley which is of great interest to him he's an anthropologist slash Indiana Jones ripoff um, kind of amazing and in the documentary Cal Model actually mentioned that a lot of this is kind of based on the success of Romance in the Stone and I kind of see that this is not a horror movie ladies and gents this is an action this is like Italian kind of action romp um, that just so happens to have a little bit of cannibalism and other stuff in here, like rape. Um, so yeah, so they all head off in a plane, so it's them, some girls that are doing a photo shoot with our CD photographer, and uh, a guy and his alcoholic wife. The guy himself survived the NAM, and it's all I can talk about, so he's like this hardened kind of military guy who is basically reliving NAM over and over in his head. And the plane goes down, in the in the jungle and at first it's out who can survive how will they survive and then they all start turning each other specifically the vietnam guy who tries to take over very very quick he survived before it's every man for themselves you listen to him you'll survive um and he gets a bit leery with some of the women in a way which made me quite uncomfortable uh obviously they run afoul of some cannibals cannibals start picking them off and uh, they take the women back for some sort of sacrificial ceremony. Um, and of course, Kevin arrives just in time, manages to outsmart the, the locals, uh, saves the two women, gets them into his canoe. They manage to escape them overall, but do they not just stumble into what might be upsetting the local villagers of course it's the white man it's always a white man ladies and gents in these movies um who are doing some sort of slave trade uh for not only enslaving people to dig for uh, emeralds and the mines but also at the same time shipping off women it's, it's a really weird twist in the story plot and uh, kevin hall takes him down 
before rescuing his love interest in the movie and them flying off into the sunset and that's kind of the movie synopsis in broad terms but by god that it doesn't do justice to how fucking all over the place is so first and foremost this is an interesting one to be lumped in the, the cannibal subgenre uh in uh cal model's documentary uh, what he says is that, you know, after Ferox, things had petered out and then they had one more run at it. And this was the first of three movies to really kick things off. So what surprised me about this is the pure lack of cannibalism in this movie. We see indications of it in dead bodies tied up in the trees. We see the, the Vietnam vet himself have his heart pulled out his chest uh, and it in front of him. But uh, to be honest... In terms of impact, it has less impact than a movie like Indiana Jones' Temple of Doom, which has a far more severe, far more traumatising heart tear. Um, but that's about the extent you see of cannibalism in this movie. Um, the movie itself is just action set piece after action set piece with a huge degree of female nudity. I mean, I could not believe... This is 85 at this point and uh, it's titties jingling all the time. One of the best scenes in this one, and this shows how shallow a human being I am, is when uh, Kevin Hall saves a woman and then they run away from the tradespeople and it's just jiggling boobies. It's just jiggling boobies done to the, 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 kin, the kind of pounding sounds of the soundtrack here, which sounds scarily f f familiar. I think this is Fabio Frizzi as well, and I think this might be a rehash, if not the same version of the, the soundtrack he did on Blast Fighter. So it's just that playing over and over again as these two women run with their jiggling boobies. Uh, it did make me very, very, very happy. But like I say, I am a man, I am flawed, I recognise it on this show. But there, yeah, it's not just tits, it's bush. Ton of bush in this movie. Um, there's lesbianism, there's rape, there's just full out sex. So this is like one of these, like kind of, this is what they want, give the people what they want. This is exploitation cinema at its finest. Somewhere in all of this though, this tribe people have embraced this idea of Dinosaur Valley. And one of the best bits in the movie, and I kind of feel like the, we wait too long to get into it, and we don't spend enough time and at all as I'm conjuring up their their god, I think, who's really just a guy wearing a... It looks like a stegosaurus or a triceratops skull on his head, which couldn't be right because that would crush him with the weight. But with this weird plastic, and it's terrible effects here, plastic dinosaur claw hand, uh, which made me laugh a whole hell of a lot. Um, I just kept thinking about Jim Carrey. And liar, liar, so the claw, the claw's coming to get you. Look, and you're scared of the claw. You're scared of the claw. The claw. I just kept thinking about that when I watched it. It made me laugh to levels that I probably shouldn't have. Um, but yeah, I, when it comes to this movie, I was talking about things that made me laugh. So jiggling pities aside, I mean, some of the dialogue in this is horrendous. And the fight scenes Awful. I mean, we're, we're talking about like 1950s style fight scenes here, you know, a punch is about maybe a metre away from someone but they get hit, a gun goes off and then 10 seconds later someone pretends to be shot and fall, falls over. A um, couple, of, couple of bits that were terrible in tone but made me laugh is like, Kevin Hall saves the, sl the slaves at this camp, sends them on their way, run, save yourselves! but sends them basically into the hands of an armed militia group who gun them down. And then we find that that's actually part of his plan, is to get them to run back, because he set up all these uh, sticks of dynamite which he uses to blow up the militia, whilst also at the same time using his now girlfriend, or soon-to-be girlfriend, as bait hanging from a cage while she gets shot at. It's, it's surprisingly... It's surprisingly careless, and at the same time, it made me wonder, and I think once again, this is mentioned in the documentary, and rightly so, this is a movie that doesn't really have any likeable character at all. Everyone is pretty reprehensible and out for themselves, and borderline slightly mad. Uh, we have a professor who is who dies kind of early in the movie, but his daughter becomes ultimately the love interest in this movie. But... Um, with a professor, what you have is uh, Kevin Hall comes in and basically spies on his daughter in the shower being caught. And the dad just brushes it off because he flatters him about how many books he's read. And the dad's cool with that. And that's fucking weird. 
you know, she's like, oh, well, I don't think this guy should go on the plane because, you know, he has seen me naked. And I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an all right thing to say, Mrs. Daughter of a Professor. And he goes, oh, but he's read all my books. And I'm like, Who, what father would say that? No father would ever fucking say that. It's all very kind of blasey and brushed off and a weird kind of, well, men will be men sort of thing. And I'm no, I'm, I'm not wanting to lean into the kind of socio-political aspect of 2018 when dissecting a movie from 85 which was made by you know Italy but those m- moments now in movies do make me raise a quizzical eyebrow and think it, was it always just presumed that this was okay maybe it was definitely not now so you've got that as well um, I think some of the set pieces in this movie are a lot of fun I think that's the thing that I come down on as a cannibal movie I think it fails wholeheartedly it's not a great example of uh, the cannibal subgenre at all. Um, it's moved so far away from it, it, it's kind of funny. It is at times poking fun at those movies, but in a way which also almost feels accidental. I would be surprised um, uh, if Mikel Tarantini was actually conscious of what he was doing or whether or not this was just incidental and actually quite apt. But I, yeah, I don't think that's the case here at all. I think what you actually get in this movie is this idea of we're going to do, um, you know, this kind of Romance in the Stone sort of Indiana Jones-esque sort of rip-off. But we'll not get financing for that. So maybe we'll get financing if we put some cannibal stuff in there. But it's going to be the bare minimum. And it's going to be all the stuff that you've seen before, but kind of watered down. And people will be alright with that. And I think that's where the movie falls for me. It definitely feels fun in places. At other points, it kind of feels troublesome. Um, it zips along at quite a quick pace. It's about an hour and a half. It feels like an hour long movie, to be honest with you. Um, I think there are some, some scenes of animal kind of cruelty or animal death. I don't know to what extent all that is actually accurate. If that is animals really dying or if they've at this point changed it. If it is... It's minimal and the camera hides it well. Not that I'm saying that that gives it justification to be in the movie because it doesn't. But at the same time, I would flip on that and say that if it isn't, then they actually did it quite cleverly. Um, I think as well, there are certain scenes which work surprisingly cheesy that I now have seen ripped off in other movies. One in particular with a piranha that gnaws at a leg. Um which, you know, if you've seen something like Piranha 3D, which we've already discussed this month, weirdly enough, uh, the effect is very, very, very similar. Um, what made me laugh about that scene is it appears to be one solitary piranha that has done all this damage, which doesn't make sense. And two, if this was an infested area full of piranha, well, they are happy to not only throw a body back in there, which is bleeding, which would just attract them, and there doesn't appear to be any action after that, but are two quote-unquote heroes, maybe jump in and have a fight in the same piranha infested water with no trouble at all so like there's a scene in the movie where someone gets attacked by leeches but no one else does and they've all went through the same area um the the vietnam guy very quickly abandons his wife in quicksand um he said yeah there's really no nice character in this movie at all and it makes it quite difficult for the kind of tongue-in-cheek a-team ending that this has with the one line of the wink at the screen and the, the you know the the helicopter flies in fact this movie finishes with one terrible 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 joke one liner joke um and it almost feels like a wink at the audience and i don't know if the movie itself justifies that so when talking about it, it's a weird one to talk about. The score, like I say, sounds like the Blast Fighter score just reused, and I think it probably is. From the limited research I could find out about it, I think this is just a, a reused Fabio Frizzy score. So that's not great. Uh, and it says maybe a lot about where we are in 85 and where budgets are in 85 that we don't have the money to be shelling out in all these different projects anymore and things are starting to wind down in Italian cinema, so that's fair. Um, I think as well, what, what you have is like ropey dialogue, um, some sketchy characters just in general. The effects are still handled quite well, the gore effects are done really well actually. So you have that aspect which I think works, but... Yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I, I would be lying if I didn't say that I had fun watching it. I totally had a blast watching this movie, but it is not a good movie and I recognise that it's not a good movie. So when it comes to grading, it kind of puts me in a bind here because I want to say that I want to score it higher 
because of how much fun I had with the movie, but I'm going to be realistic. This is a three-star movie. I liked it. Um, my experiences while watching it felt like I really liked it, but realistically when it finished, I liked it, which is surprising. I thought it looked really cheesy. What I will say, and it kind of upsets me a little bit, is the cover art for this is fucking amazing. And had this movie given me everything in the cover art, I would have been over the moon. But sadly, the giant crocodile is actually a tiny crocodile. The kind of vulture-esque, pterodactyl-like creature is not really that. And um, the, what they did get right is there's a whole lot of tata on display. Lots of boobies, lots of jiggling boobies in this movie, and that makes me happy. It's three out of five for Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. I would say check it out. I would say if you've got an hour and a half to kill, I believe, now I think you should always buy where possible. It is available on YouTube if you can't be bothered buying, but for 9 99 this is worth checking out with a group of friends. If you're a cannibal genre completist, check it out. If you're one of those, I have not seen these, this Italian movie before, sort of completist person if that I don't know if that's a person but let's see if you are let's see you're getting into Italian stuff this is probably worthwhile jumping on it would probably double really well with Blast Fighter weirdly enough you could probably have the two of them back to back and have a ton of fun with them just following Michael Sopsky's um, journey from kind of futuristic not futuristic uh, kind of Rambo deer hunter sort of guy through to Indiana Jones-esque romancing the stone sort of did it's weird, it, but it would work. It would, be a, it would be a very fun combo of movies that you could get through in three hours. So why not do that?